سلسلة عن فلسطين وعن الوضع في فلسطين كيف كيف الوضع في فلسطين لما first intifada going on كيف الوضع Okay, well, like I said previously, um, the first Intifada was like really something new for all the Palestinian people. We used to have like problem stuff going on once in a while between you know the Israeli people and Palestinian, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, we were able to go to Jerusalem to Al Aqsa Mosque and pray um, if we want almost every day. Um, Friday prayers was open, but as soon as the Intifada started, like I said, um, a lot of killing, um, a lot of dead people from both sides, but Palestinian more because they had no weapons. The only weapon that, that was available is just rocks, you know, sometimes maybe knives in case, but they never got in like really close contact. So. They had weapons and they used to just uh, fire um, against, you know, Palestinian people. Uh, they closed, as I said, they closed the um, uh, schools, um, universities, um, transportation between, you know, cities. They would put checkpoints to prevent people from going. Like, let's say I have relatives in Nablus or in Hebrew or I, they were, people were not able to to communicate or to see each other. And it kept getting worse and worse. Um, of course, it's still the same right now. Uh, now Jerusalem is blocked. Um, if you carry a Palestinian, um, if you carry a, a US passport, but you, you're carrying a Palestinian passport, still you're not, uh, you're not allowed to enter, United, to enter Jerusalem. It's blocked. If you are under the age of 55, you're not allowed. Yeah, you can't. Even though if you give them your American passport and show them that, okay, I'm, I'm carrying an American passport, can I go? No, you have a, um, a Hawaii or an ID, you have a Palestinian ID, you have a Palestinian uh, uh, passport, so we treat you as a Palestinian, not American. But on the other hand, if you are like a US citizen born here, like my kids, um, and they yeah. don't have an ID, or my husband, he's Jordanian, but he never had uh, a Palestinian uh, ID or a Palestinian uh, passport. When he enters uh, um, Palestine, he's fine. He's respected, he's welcomed, no issues, no question asked. Uh, you can go to Jerusalem, you can do whatever you want because of your American passport. But on the other hand, I have a sister who lives there but she has an American passport. She has an American passport, but she has a Palestinian uh, passport also. She cannot go to Jerusalem at all. At all, you have to. You have to apply for a special permission from the Israeli government in order for you to go, and they give you a permission maybe for one day, maybe for three days, maybe for a week. It depends. If they like you or see that you're like, okay, he's, a, he's fine, okay, we'll give him like three days. Oh no, you're rejected, you can't. So it's up to them. Basically, they control everything. They control the borders, they control uh, the airport, and now none of the Palestinian people who have a Palestinian passport allowed to go to Ben Gurion Airport, which is Tel Aviv. Not. They're not allowed. They have to go through, like, um, uh, uh, what they uh, call it, um, something really, really horrible, because they have to go to Jordan first. And then you have to go through all the Jordanian airport and everything, and then drive from the Jordan, uh, from Amman airport, to Jericho, where the border is, and then cross the border, and it's like um, um, really, really tough because it takes you sometimes six, seven hours just sitting in the buses waiting for them very to hot. open up very hot. and say, and you know Jericho, how hot it is, very hot there. Sometimes they keep people in the bus for six, seven hours 
and they'll be like just sitting there doing nothing. Whenever they feel like they want to let that bus go, they let them in. And then you have to go through their security, their checkpoints, and then you, after that you have to go past the Palestinian security and Palestinian checkup in Jericho and then go to your uh, distance where you want to go. So in spite of all of this, you still go back and visit? Yes. Yes. Why? Because it's my country, it's my land. They will never, they will never take me out of Rome. They will never delete my roots. This is my roots. That's my country. That's my place. Those are my olive trees. And that's my house. And my family's house. They will never. Every year when I go to Jordan, I still cross the border and take my kids, my husband, and go. My kids visit Jerusalem every time I go. We go every day to Jerusalem. They pray in Al-Aqsa. They know their roots. They know my, my village where I grew up. They know their dad's village where, they, where their dad grew up. Um, and they will still, even though they, we are all American citizens and we carry the, Palestinian, the um, American passport, but we are Palestinian and we are proud of our um, origin and our country. Because that's our land. They keep saying it's their land. It's not. It's not. And they keep saying Palestinian people are killing Israeli people. Well, they're fighting. How do you feel if you are sitting in your house and somebody comes and kick you out and take over your house that you built and you've been living all your life in it? How would you feel? Right? It's, it's, it's really tough. And the problem is the media all over the world does not show all this. I have a lot of American friends, a lot of very nice friends, a lot of neighbors that they're really nice. When I moved to this neighborhood, my next door neighbor, she didn't even know anything about Palestine. She knew Israel. She just said Israel. I sat with her for probably at least four hours. And I, was, I explained to her everything. And she was shocked. She was in tears. She was like, you know what, I showed her videos. I showed her a lot of videos, a lot of YouTube. I was like, here, just look at this. And she was in tears. She was like, you know what? We're blocked here. We don't see anything. We don't see the real world. They think Palestinian people like killing or like fighting. No, we love peace. We love to live in peace. You know, a lot of people, if you, if you look around and see the whole world, you'll find Palestinian in every single country. Why? Because they're running away. A lot of people, they can't. They can't stay there. But still, even if we live like 20, 30, 40 years abroad, we still want to go back to our country. It's our country. It's our land. It's, it's our spot. So moving back and forth in time, you are Palestinian Arab American at the same time. Could you please talk about the challenges that you face as an Arab American? ونفس السؤال ما هي التحديات اللي تواجه العرب الأمريكيين في أمريكا الآن؟ Okay, well, since I moved, honestly, the first challenge that will face you is the language, language barrier. You will be like when you come here. We learn English, we learned English in schools, but we learned like the British English, you know, like the real, real like accent and the real English language. And we will come here and say, like, we'll hear, we'll hear somebody say water. We'll be like, what is he saying? <laughs> you know? Honestly, I'm like, what water? So we say water. Water. Because this is how we, we learned it. So that was one of, like, the challenges that we faced, uh, that I faced when I moved here. I will understand most of the language, but it was kind of really tough at the beginning. But once, you know, I got involved at work and, you know, started studying and um, I got, you know, I, I got it. So it, it was, it, it got easier and easier. Like the first year when I moved here, absolutely it's not like today, after like 25 years. Um, one of the, like the biggest challenge that I faced um, was uh, September 11. We got married, uh, me and him, we got married September 9th of 2001, Sunday. Two days before. And it was in Chicago. <laughs> Our wedding was in Chicago. 
September 11, of course, Tuesday, and I had off work for like three weeks because of the wedding. And um, that week was a horrible week. We, I, I couldn't leave the house because in Chicago, because it's, it's not like Columbus. I did not have anything in, Ch in, in Columbus. But in Chicago, because there was a lot of like um, Arabic uh, people, uh, a lot of Muslim community, um, they, they got attacked. Like in Walgreens, at Jewel, the grocery stores, a lot of Muslim people, ladies, got attacked. Either verbal, or people will snatch their um, headscarf, um, call them really nasty words. So that week was really horrible because we just stayed home. We didn't want to go anywhere because we were so scared. Because people just got the idea that Muslim did it. A Muslim did it. You know what I mean? Muslim. So this is all what they caught. And this is, I don't blame them for their behavior, honestly. Because if I was in their spot, I would maybe do the same thing. I don't know. So probably they were also scared, worried. That's what, that was tough. Um, but honestly, like my, my manager called me to check on me, and um, as soon as I came back to work, uh, the head manager came to, my, to the counter at the pharmacy, and I really appreciate, I will never forget his words. He came and he said, uh, listen, Wafa, you are, uh, first of all, you're a human, uh, you're one of our employees, if anybody at work or any customer, or anybody approach you with any kind of, you know, um, um, wording or behavior, please let us know you are family and you are protected. And I was so happy to hear those words because it made me feel comfortable and it made me feel that even though I'm Muslim, but they're accepting me. They're not rejecting me being Muslim. Um, did you have an, like, did you have any other experiences like that uh, during that time? Like it was no, myself, no. But I know a friend that she got attacked at Walgreens in Chicago verbally, and they snatched her um, scarf and just left her, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that was, that was awful. That uh, made me really scared that week that I told my husband, I was like, okay, we're not going anywhere. anywhere. We're just staying home, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we stayed home. Because it was really tough. It was tough. Uh, after that, um, honestly, I did not have any like um, thing that made me feel, you know, not acceptable. Maybe at work or with friends, with neighbors. Uh, but I, I know that a lot of friends had really bad experience too. So. Um, حد الآن تواجهني صوت اللغة يعني يعني أكثر اثنين يعني كانوا مقربين إلي بدي أعتبرهم هم اللي ضروني تقريبا يعني أول ما جيت على شيكاغو أخوي الله يسر عليه ويجيبه بالسلامة إن شاء الله كان يساعدني كثير نطلع المحلات عندي مقابلة عندي دكتور أبوينتمات يروح معي يساعدني ما خلاه يعني ما قال لي روح لحالك اعمل دبل حالك تكلم لطش تجيب ما في وظل الحال على حاله يعني لما تزوجت بعد ثلاث سنين برضو حسيت وفاء عندي موعد الدكتور يلا معي عندي موعد رخصه يلا معي ما في يعني فعلى حد الان يعني انا الانجليزي بواجه صعوبه يعني And his employees speak Arabic. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> عندي عمال كمان من العربي يعني ونتكلم دائما بالعربي الحمد لله يعني برضو زي ما قالت يعني إحنا كانت اللغة الإنجليزية اللي أخذناها بالبلاد برضو اللغة البريطانية ما عرفنا لما جينا هنا واتصاب وهاي يعني ما كنا نعرف هاللغة كلها هذه الحمد لله يعني بين يعني بنسلك حالنا بنطلع بنتكلم لكن مش هيك اللغة يعني in Urdu, that's the that's the system in our schools. They teach you the. But, uh, why specific? Why? Uh, 
British English or? Uh, because um, in 19, before 1948, we had Britain that took over Middle East. Like uh, for Jordan, Palestine, it was Britain. For uh, Lebanon and Syria, it was France. So now in Lebanon and uh, Syria, the second language is French. But in uh, Palestine and Jordan, it's English. So, yeah, that's...